Hi everyone, uh, Michael here, and today I want to talk to you about our upcoming miniatures war game, uh, Ages of Conflict. Uh, Ages of Conflict is a six millimeter miniatures war game. So uh, I say six millimeter, though the size of the miniature doesn't doesn't really matter. It's just a representation uh, of the soldiers of the unit. So if you want to use you know ten millimeter, fifteen millimeter, you know twenty twenty eight, whatever you feel comfortable using. Uh, you know, we tend to use six millimeter uh, just because we like the look of it. Um, though you know, you're welcome to use, you know, whatever you want. Doesn't doesn't change the rules, and you don't have to change the scale as far as the movement and the ranges or anything like that. You can, you know, just keep them exactly as they are. It works just the same. Uh, Ages of Conflict is a, a multi-genre system. One of our design goals is to create a rule set that allows you to fight uh, pretty much any era of warfare without having to change up your rule set. So if you want to fight. You know, say a fantasy battle, you want to fight you know, tanks, um, then you, know, you can use the same set of rules. So the initial uh, release of the book will include uh, rules and army lists that cover historical period. And when I say historical, I'm basically talking uh, ancients up to, say, early Renaissance. It will include fantasy. It will include also the uh, Black Powder era of warfare. Uh, we do have some uh, supplements planned that will expand that to World War II and uh, sci-fi. Uh, so that's, that's when I say multi-genre, uh, yeah, so and just to make it clear, you can use uh, all those armies against each other. So if you want to have science, fi uh, science, uh, say a science fiction army battling World War II or a sci-fi army you know, battling an ancient army, uh, the rules don't change. They will be supplements, but the rules themselves don't change at all. The army list, I kind of briefly mentioned, uh, the army list, we're going to include about 50 army lists that cover the historical you know, period of war. So it's going to go back to ancients, so um, Mesopotamia, so we're talking you know, Elam, uh, Hittites, Babylonia, all the way up to uh, early Renaissance and everything in between. So you're going to find Rome and some of its you know, various uh, states, you know, the you know, Republic and Imperial and so on. Uh, you're going to find so several uh, Greek armies, several uh, eras from the Japanese history or Japanese you know era, uh, and then a lot in between there also. So there's going to be about 50 historical army lists that you can choose from. Uh, fantasy, fantasy is going to have about 15. Fantasy uh, army lists will include a lot of the standard fantasy army lists. So you're going to find you know dwarfs and elves and undead, uh, and and a lot of others. Um, but it's a lot of the fantasy that that you're used to seeing. And black powder will include, uh, say, the French and Indian slash, you know, Seven Years War. It's going to include the Napoleonics, uh, Crimean War, American uh, uh, War of Independence, and the American, uh, American Civil War. So the army lists are there just, you know, for convenience. You don't have to use them. You can change them. You can discard them. You know, do whatever you want with them. They're not, they're not binding. Uh, we are using uh, points. So every weapon, every ability, every unit that you find in the game will have a points value attached to it. And just like the army list, the points are really there just for convenience. Uh, you don't have to use them. If you're fighting a historical battle and the composition of the armies, uh, if, if it's well known, then you don't need the points. Just, you know, just create your armies that represent, you know, the the, the composition and you don't, you know, the points uh, is completely unnecessary. Um, so we're really just giving the points there just in case, you know, two people who maybe don't really know each other, that kind of gives you the ability to have a relatively, you know, balanced game. Um, again, use them, don't use them, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, base sizes. So base sizes is always a fun topic with six millimeter because it really isn't a standard. Um, we tend to use 60 by 30. This is what you see here. We also use 40 by 40, though um, you know, there's not a a uh, there's there's not a, a mandate, so you can use whatever base size you want. If you mix base sizes, you know, say maybe one side has 60 by 30, and the other side has 40 by 40, or 40 by 20, or 50 by 50, uh, you can do that. Uh, and really, the only uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you may have to make some compromises in, in hand combat. You know, when the two units come together, uh, and we do have some rules that kind of help you uh, along with that situation. Um, as far as uh, our mechanic, so this is an important topic because everyone wants to know how you actually play the game. So we use uh, d10s, and it's a d10 dice pool. So the more dice you're rolling when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to succeed in a task, you know, the better chance you have. 
most of the time you're going to be rolling either you know two dice or three dice so for example when you're rolling a command check you're typically going to be rolling two dice uh, most units when they're making an attack will be rolling three dice if you're dealing with fantasy and you know, uh, dragons and uh, giants and you may be going to six or seven or eight dice. So for the most part, two dice or three dice. Uh, all of your rolls will be against a target number. So just as an example, command checks. Uh, most of the command checks in the game will be a six. So what that means is I'm rolling two dice and I need uh, one of those dice to be a six or more. It's you know, 75% chance. So in this case, I rolled, I got a five and an eight. Uh, that means that command check succeeded because at least one of those dice rolls was a six. In combat, that target number is, is going to vary just depending upon the defense of your opponent. So if you're fighting against uh, an opponent that has no armor, then that target number can be as low as two. If you're fighting against, say, a really uh, heavily armored you know, like cataphract or something, that, that target number might be nine, ten, or eleven, uh, in which case ten still succeeds. Uh, but in combat, that target number that you need to succeed will vary just depending upon your opponent's uh, defense and, and the situation. You'll cover and, and so on will also change it. So the last thing I want to talk about uh, is how to actually you know, use your units. So Ages of Conflict is an order-based system. Uh, that means anytime you want to do something with a unit, you're going to issue that unit uh, an order. We just have these little tokens here. So the tokens, or I'm sorry, the orders really represent or determine what your unit can do in that turn. So uh, if I want this unit to adopt a different formation, maybe they're in a just a regular uh, line, I want them to adopt a testudo, I give them a change formation order. And then when that unit is activated, they attempt to carry that out. They try to uh, change that formation. If I want this unit to charge into combat, then they're gonna get a charge order. If I want them to attack with missile weapons, then they're going to have a different order for that as well. So the order that you give your unit, it's going to determine what it can do that turn and when it can do it. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about is just the activation system. Uh, Ages of Conflict is an alternating action system. That means you'll activate a unit, then your opponent will activate, and then you know, back and forth. And what that really means is that it keeps both players engaged in the game. This isn't a situation where you're going to spend you know, 10 minutes moving all your units and then your opponent's going to spend 10 minutes moving all theirs while you go grab a, a cup of coffee or something. So every 10 to 20 seconds, you're going to be doing something in the game. You're activating a unit, you're making an attack, you're doing something. So the ultimating actions really, uh, we find, helps keep the game moving uh, very swiftly and keeps uh, all the players engaged. If you're not actually moving, then you're, then you're thinking about what you're doing next. So anyway, hope that helps. Hope to give you got some idea of our game. If you have questions and you want to learn more, you can find us on Facebook at Ages of Conflict, or you can go to badgoblingames.com and uh, find us there. Thank you very much.